drivers to take the back seat. But these same automakers are mired in lawsuits for failing to make their current cars safe. Joining me now, Lauren Fix, the car coach. Lauren, welcome back to the show. Always love having you here. You know, we were thinking about these self driving cars, and GM's current president is saying that they should be available by 2020. I look at what happened with GM and their recalls. Nissan has recalls this week. Really? I'm mm. going to trust my car to drive me? What do you say? <laughs> Well, I think the timing is really horrible from a PR standpoint. I think if I was going to make this announcement, you might want to wait till after the congressional hearings and sort of use it as a repair. This, I think the timing's horrible, but think about all the other manufacturers that are out there that have gone through issues. Every manufacturer's gone through issues, but Volvo, Audi, Ford, uh, even Tesla has said they're going to make self driving cars, including Google, and they've been testing them for a while. And I, I still hesitate on these self-driving cars when there's still continual problems for a multitude of reasons. Well, and we're going to get into some of those. Let me, you know, mm -hmm. I'm speaking from experience here because I drove one of these self-driving cars. And let me tell you, the thing mm -hmm. scared me to death. The idea, I just couldn't turn <laughs> over control of the car to a computer. It didn't seem safe to me. Watch what happened when I tried to do it. Oh, this is disconcerting. Don't touch the bridge, Beacon. <laughs> oh my gosh, I touched the brake. I yeah. couldn't stop. Yeah, but it did it. And you felt I your... felt it come down. Yeah. yeah, so you heard your ABS brakes engage. Yes. You felt your yes. seat belt tightening, and it's getting you ready, saying, I'm going to stop this car because you're not doing it. And even if I can't, I'm going to have you ready for a crash. Or a you know, wow, or a that's impressive. Best. It is impressive. Impressive, but scary, because it didn't stop as quickly as I wanted it to. Uh, and, and even having the wheel drive for you, mm -hmm. it was strange and foreign. I, I didn't like it. And when I look at the problems that we're having with these cars today, software, hardware, not working together, all kinds of problems, we, we can't even figure out in the car we're operating. I think now you're going to have a car that self-drives? No, I'm not betting on it. Well, they know that consumers are going to have a really tough time letting go of the wheel. And now you were driving a Mercedes and oh, I it was saw fancy. that when it aired. It was yes, fancy, pants. very nice car. Mercedes makes a beautiful S class and when you add this package on, it not only gets expensive, but it will save lives. But you gotta remember way back in the days when anti locks brakes came out, they gave you the ability to brake and steer. It did not say it would stop in a shorter period of a distance of time. What it does do is give you the ability so the brakes don't lock up and you can avoid an accident. In this case, this will stop so you don't impact the vehicle or item in front of you. So these systems do work, but they need to work in conjunction with consumers and they make the roads safer, they make drivers safer. They have lane change departure and cross traffic alert and around view cameras and, and, and some of the Nissans, it can two cars ahead of you because the camera is down low. I mean, huh. every manufacturer has something really cool. Yeah, it, it, some of the stuff is great. The rear view cams, mm -hmm. I love all that. There's some stuff I do yes. like. Other things I thought, mm, not ready for prime time yet. Uh, yeah. Last yeah, night in the show, we had on Alan Cam, and, and he worked for NHTSA mm -hmm. for 25 years. The guy's a true expert. And I was asking him about why can't NHTSA get this right? Why can't they see these problems? They get reports. Why don't they know it? Here's what he had to say about the complexity of the job. Vehicles have become much more complex with That's right. electronics, drive by wire. There's now the equivalent of four high end PCs on a new vehicle. So problems are much more complex. Four new high end PCs. So if you think NITS is having a hard time now, just wait. Oh, I, I agree. I mean, you're looking at the average car has got at least 20 little microprocessors, sometimes many, many more, especially that Mercedes you were driving. And each one has got a separate program that it needs to control. They do work in conjunction, but there are some other factors that this gentleman didn't even define, such as electromagnetic interference, which can cause unintentional acceleration. It can cause systems not to work properly. This is not commonplace, but when it happens, it can't always be replicated. So we have that in conjunction with possible mechanical problems, and you've got the driver who's not always paying attention. So drivers do want this type of technology. They want to be able to be on their cell phone, read the newspaper, and get to work. I don't. You probably don't. <laughs> but a lot of your viewers do. Well, and because they're, they're meeting people's needs, but at the same time, they're trying to make the road yeah, safer. I, learned, I, still I think, think, there's I a think lot we don't know roles. the answer to that question yet. I think we're still sure. waiting to find out if people will want to do it. But I have this question for you. And this yeah. is something people ask me all the time. So if you have two self-driving cars and they run into each other, whose fault is it? 
Well, that's where we're going to. I just finished a panel in Washington D.C. earlier this year. We had people from all over the world, and we were discussing this. This is going to be a worldwide problem. Problem. Right. You've got insurance <laughs> regulations. You've got government regulations. You've got laws that are in place. And even though the computer will know this information. People are anxious. Sometimes they'll override the system. They'll try and blame the car yes. manufacturer or blame the other driver, plus potential problems that we don't know about with computer glitches. So I think there's a lot of hurdles that need to be overcome before we say, okay, the car is totally autonomous. Just get in that cab or get in that car and take me where I need to go. I don't think we're there yet. I think 2020. It's possible. Yes, we can produce that car today. I have seen it with Volvo. I've seen it with Google. I've seen it with Audi. But I still think consumers aren't ready, and I don't think insurance companies or government regulations are ready. We're and I'm not a fan go. of more, but I think we're not there yet. I agree. Lauren, thanks so much for coming on. I always love to hear what you have to Thank say you. about these issues. Thank you. Most welcome. And the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, NAIC, says. Car insurance costs are about an average of 912 bucks a year, but even a minor traffic violation can cost you money. Here's what we have in tonight's top five. The most expensive traffic violations. That's according to insurancequotes.com. Number five, failure to yield to pedestrians or failing to stop. Both those infractions can cost you an extra 19%. Number four, speeding. Putting the pedal to metal can cost you an average of 21% more for car insurance if you're caught going 1 to 15 miles per hour over the limit, or 30% more if you're speeding 31 miles per hour or more over the limit. Coming in at number three, careless driving can increase your premium by 27%. Number two, reckless driving with 82%. Why the big jump from careless driving? Because reckless driving is considered a blatant disregard for traffic laws like drag racing. While careless driving is just defined as an unintentional act. And the number one most expensive traffic violation, driving under the influence one conviction, a single conviction of this serious crime, will result in a national average premium increase of 93%. The least expensive is a seatbelt violation. It can raise your premium by 5%. Wow. Still to come, my two cents more and better get out the tissues. Spring is here and the flowers are set to bloom. We have